Hey hey, Marcus Ass with you here and welcome to episode 26 in our quick progression series. Today we're going to start off altering the vessel from our last mission, episode 25, where we took all of our Kerbinauts for their super training mission. Essentially we're removing all the unneeded components, all we need to do is make a smaller booster to get ourselves up to dock with the Prosperity Space Station, so we have got the booster here. The next stage we have a small poodle engine and a reasonably small amount of liquid fuel and oxidizer in our tank to fuel that. And of course up above that we've got a heat shield. Of course that's going to let us re-enter our MK3 passenger module there. We have the four RCS thrusters, we have the flight computer, we have four solar panels there around the outside and we also have four parachutes as well. Two of the smaller monopropellant tanks there. And importantly we have a large docking port on top there for docking and a remote guidance unit so that we can control this thing when there's no Kerbals on board. Assigning our crew there you can see we have 16 of our level 5 Kerbals loaded up and poor Burberry Kerman sitting out there on his lonesome to single handedly man the KSC. Heading out to launch here with our epic crew loaded into the passenger module all trained up from episode 25. Switching on the interior overlay, you can see them all loaded in there, nicely packed in like sardines. Setting the Prosperity Space Station as our target in map view, and after we pass that desert area, we are going to launch this vessel. Over the past few episodes, I've had a number of comments asking about the Prosperity Space Station, the practicalities of it, whether you get a lot of extra bonuses by having many mobile processing labs, and in general, no. No, there is absolutely no reason that I can think of why you could ever utilize 16 mobile processing labs at the same time. Ditch that booster stage there. So even though there's limited practicality with the space station, that doesn't mean it's not fun to build one. And really, just being able to practice a lot with docking maneuvers, this is what gets you the experience to have a lot of fun with the game. Now that we're on the Poodle engine there, you'll see that we're pointing slightly upwards still on the nav ball just to ensure that our time to apoapsis just stays around the 1-2 second mark. The reason we want to do this in this situation is because the Prosperity Space Station is orbiting up at around 90 kilometers, and we want our apoapsis to basically keep sitting on that mark roughly. So burn complete there, we're now in low Kerbin orbit. Basically now what we want to do is ensure that when we come around from our orbit we're going to fall in at the same position as the Prosperity Space Station and to do that we need to make our apoapsis higher on the opposite side and this is going to mean that it's going to take us longer to complete our orbit. Of course because the Prosperity Space Station itself is now coming around faster in the orbit we're both going to meet up at this intersect marker here. Remember as well you can use the RCS to just finely tune that intersect. Remember those H and N keys, they're very handy for doing this. In we come here to the station now and of course as we come in we want to turn retrograde and wipe off all of the relative velocity. Once that's done of course we need to turn towards the target to a small burn again just to approach. There we go, at this distance 10 meters per second is plenty so we'll immediately turn retrograde and get ready to wipe that off as well. There we go. Now that we're ready to dock, we'll set that target docking port as our target. To make docking easier, we'll turn on our RCS and switch into locked camera mode. And this just means that our viewport is in relation to the directions that we move when we're doing our translation maneuvers. And we'll use the I, J, K and L keys along with the W, A, S, D keys to control both our rotation and our translation in relation to the docking port. Only 20 meters distance there. Just wiping that velocity off by thrusting in the opposite direction. Another common question I get is why I don't use the docking view to do the docking instead of what I use which is staging view. And this is essentially because in staging view you can actually do translation and rotation movements at the same time. And this is much better in my opinion. I don't even see the point of docking view most of the time. I'm doing a pretty damn poor job of docking this because I'm not concentrating, I'm trying to talk at the same time. Come on and dock there, so <laughs> finally got it. Now we just need to transfer the Kerbals across by right clicking on our MK3 passenger module and essentially transferring them into the MK3 passenger module on the Prosperity Space Station. Fast forwarding the video through that of course because it's boring to watch and essentially now we're just going to undock 
our little transport vessel here and just maneuver away uh, and it will continue orbiting around Kerbin and that will be quite fine. Essentially this vessel is now here orbiting for when we actually return with our Prosperity space station or when we have some other use for it. The first mission we want to do with our Prosperity Station is to redirect an asteroid and I've been wanting to do this episode for a long time. So we've got to pick an asteroid, there's lots to choose from when you've unlocked your tracking station. But the one I've set it on here is a large asteroid which is going to come in quite close to Kerbin and it's going to mean we can get a relatively easy intercept compared to some others. If we zoom into Kerbin we can actually see exactly where it's going to pass and the ones you want to pick that are easiest to redirect are the ones coming in close to Kerbin and also don't have a real polar inclination of some sort that is going to be really tricky to redirect down into. So this one's passing by at 5,500 kilometers, so that's a great option. We should even be able to actually change its inclination to match that of the moons. So we'll head now back to our Prosperity space station and the great thing is that we can actually look at all these intercept lines for the asteroid from our map when we're using the Prosperity space station as well. All we need to do there is set the asteroid as our target and then we'll actually see that asteroid orbit line so that we can actually get ourselves quite close to that. Planning a maneuver here to basically raise our apoapsis so that it comes out to meet close to that orbital line of the asteroid. So we'll just time warp around until we're ready to do our burn and this is going to take multiple passes obviously with such a massive vessel even with this amount of nerve rocket motors it's going to take quite a bit of time. You'll quite often see this technique used when people are flying SSTO vessels that have got very low thrust to weight ratios it's just to make your burn more efficient. Obviously skipping over a lot of that and finishing that first burn and we're going to again make a few passes at this. We'll just update that manoeuvre node for our second pass around. Each of these burns takes around 3-4 to four minutes so you do have to be patient when you're trying to manoeuvre a vessel of this size. Again coming around for our third pass, this one will get us all the way up there to that asteroid orbit line. You can see there that the Prosperity Space Station itself is quite stable. Now that we've finished that burn, the next thing to do is adjust our inclination. So we're coming up here to our descending node and we're essentially going to do a normal burn to actually make sure that our inclination matches as closely as we can at this point with the asteroid that's going to come in. It is quite a large inclination change we're doing here, so we're at about 10 degrees there now. Bringing that right down, and engine cut off there, that's about perfect. Now the next thing we need to do is boost up our periapsis, and this is simply so that we can orbit way out from Kerbin, and actually time warp really quickly so that we can await the asteroid until it gets in here into Kerbin's sphere of influence. And really, there's no reason why you can't be early when you're planning this. So we'll cut the engines there, that'll do. So now we just need to time warp ourselves in until the asteroid actually comes into Kerbin's sphere of influence. So we're just waiting, waiting, waiting here now. Now because our orbit is so low around Kerbin, we're actually coming around multiple times as the asteroid comes in. So this is going to mean that we can fairly easily do an intercept maneuver as it gets close. We've actually been a little lucky in this case because it's only going to take a fairly small adjustment to actually meet up and intercept with the asteroid here. Just doing that very small 26 meter per second burn and then just doing some very fine adjustments with the RCS to get it as close as we can. So we'll time warp around until we actually come right up to the asteroid. And of course this could have been just a little more efficient this maneuver if I was coming into the asteroid at a lower angle. So we are going to have a few minor delta V losses there but hey, I'm just being lazy. And we definitely have the delta V needed to get to the asteroid anyway so I wasn't too worried. I was able to get to around 24 kilometers there. Seeing that our difference in velocity started off above 500 meters per second that's pretty good. So now that we're quite close to the asteroid, we use the same tactic as we would if we were coming into dock. We basically wipe off all our relative velocity, we turn towards the target, do another burn, and we rinse and repeat that process until we're very, very close and able to get the rest of the way just with our RCS. Only around 770 meters distance here now between us and the asteroid, so we're just wiping off that last little bit of relative velocity. 
Again, when we're maneuvering our very large prosperity space station, it takes quite a long time just to turn this thing. So patience is the key here. Slow and steady wins the race with this one. Just a very, very small four to five meters per second burn here now. And again, we're going to turn retrograde just to wipe that last little bit off. So obviously the other big news this week was the release of the 1.2 version of Kerbal Space Program. This one here is actually recorded in 1.1.3. So just keep in mind that if you are trying to build this fresh, you're probably going to need to make some extra considerations in regards to the antennas that you use and anything of that nature because the 1.2 version has had a massive upgrade in terms of the communication systems. That being said, anything that has a pilot on board should be fine because obviously with a pilot you can always control the vessel. Just zooming out here so we can see the entire asteroid and the space station in the one shot. Just wiping off those last few meters per second before we turn around and grab hold of this asteroid with our grabbing unit. Again, we'll do a long-winded turn here to actually face the asteroid again. We've got the advanced grabber unit armed and we're basically going to try to come in and just hit around the center of the asteroid. It's important to target the center of mass by right-clicking on the asteroid and choosing that option. Ah, I didn't grab. Come on, come on, grab. There we go, got it. Now we're basically turning the asteroid retrograde and doing a small burn to start reducing our velocity. And at the same time, we're going to start refueling our tanks. And this is because by now, we've actually lost all of our oxidizer. And we need oxidizer in our tanks just so that we can power our Werner engines in our very first booster stage of the Prosperity Space Station. We can stop that there now because we only need a little bit of fuel just to fill up some oxidizer and this is going to mean that as we push the asteroid, our Werner engines can push us and keep us on track basically pointing retrograde as we wipe off the rest of the velocity needed to get us into a Kerbin orbit. So we'll just complete the burn that we'd started here. And you can see there as we come around, the Werner engines have actually got enough power to really push us back and fight any sort of movement that we've got going on. Now with some vessels you will have a lot of problems with docking ports kind of bending and twisting and that sort of thing. I've been pretty lucky here but there is a great mod called Kerbal Joint Reinforcement which will actually limit the bending that will actually occur on your vessel. So that can be a good option if you're really fighting the Kraken with this kind of thing. The next thing we want to do is basically raise the periapsis so that our orbit becomes largely circular. So we're going to time warp up until we get to our apoapsis marker and we're going to do a prograde burn to just extend that periapsis way out. Just under a 120 meter per second burn here. The other great thing about raising our periapsis at this point is it means that our entire orbit is going to be slower as we approach down around the intersect markers needed to actually change the inclination of the asteroid and our cells of course. You want your relative velocity to curb and to be as low as possible when you're doing your inclination change and that is a great reason to be doing this now rather than doing an inclination change first. So we've set the moon as our target here and we want to time warp around to the ascending node in this case because it's a further distance away from the center of Kerbin than the descending node is. So we're going to be moving at a lower velocity at our ascending node which is why I've chosen that one. So this was a 130 meter per second burn just to adjust that inclination so we're skipping over this. So as we get close with that relative inclination, you can see there in the top left, Kerbal Engineer is telling us that we're very, very close there, bringing that right down. So after all that, our fuel tanks are basically empty, so we're going to deploy all of our drills, we're going to start refilling our tanks. And for some reason the liquid fuel isn't filling up, so I'll just switch the other convert options off and just switch on the liquid fuel there. That's better. So this asteroid that we've got here is around 580 tonnes. Now the Prosperity Space Station, uh, when it's fully fueled, is around 446 tonnes. So the asteroid is really only making our mass around double that what it is if we're not trying to push the asteroid at all. So doing an EVA out here with Bob Kerman, our scientist. And what you'll see here when you compare the Prosperity Space Station against one of the Kerbals is just how damn massive this thing is. In we come for the first time to touch an asteroid. 
Now what you'll notice is you can't do an EVA report around an asteroid. You don't get any science for that, which I think is a bit of a shame. A lot of other science instruments are like that as well, but we can take a surface sample. And I'm sure you'll agree that building the space station for many hundreds of thousands in funds and travelling all the way out here was well worth the 54 science points that we just received from that surface sample. Of course there's missions that you can pick up from Mission Control that allow you to do missions with asteroids and they're great things to pick up. The real reason we've done this though is so we can use the asteroid as a refueling station. First though we're going to give it a name and we're going to name it after the Prosperity Space Station. Uh, Prosperoid? I don't know, that doesn't seem quite right, it seems like some sort of hemorrhoid cream. <laughs> Nevertheless, Prosperoid it is. So yes, we've got a great refueling depot here at the asteroid. We can convert 87% of the mass of that asteroid into ore, which we can then convert to any of our fuel types. So that is a great reason to have this thing around Kerbin. We've released the advanced grabber unit and we'll just use our RCS to move backwards. So I hope you enjoyed that asteroid redirect mission. If you have any questions for me, whack them in the comments below. Thanks very much to all of my subscribers. I just passed 4,000 this week, which kind of blew my mind considering it was only 2,000 I passed here a few weeks back. Of course, Elon Musk tweeting me there the other week helped with that. For those that haven't subscribed, please do subscribe to see more. Follow me on Twitter at Marcus House Game, and we'll see you in the next video. Just like with Pole, the experience that we're going to pick up here around Val is identical, so we're going to get 20 points for planting these flags. Again, planting the flags is only worth 1.6 extra experience per Kerbal, but we'll do it anyway. There we go, all flags planted, that's beautiful. So this was our last mission for this leg of the journey. We're going to start heading back now to Kerbin. Everybody back in the vessel.